5G advanced he will bring us the latest industry development and application of the 5G a passive IoT. Let's welcome Mr. Edward. Okay, thank you, and also thanks for the previous two speakers and give us very excellent speeches. And we learned quite a lot uh, for this 5G or industry. And uh, but right now we come to the uh, next topic, which is about the detailed technical part. And uh, my topic today I bring here is the passive IoT. And uh, also this is Ed Worley. It's an honor to be here to share with you some information on our latest progress. Okay, so uh, now uh, let's first take a look at the whole IoT market. And uh, I want to say that uh, right now the global IoT market is still growing quite fast. And we know that China is the largest IoT market around the world. And uh, right now, uh, in the year 2022, we already achieved the result whereby the connection for IoT devices is, uh, surpasses the connection for uh, people. It means that uh, uh, everybody in China has one or two smartphones and it also has one or two uh, IoT connections. And uh, so when we look around the world, we can still find that uh, uh, this is also the data from the GSMA intelligence. And uh, so the uh, all technic IoT market it grows with a cut of 11 percentage. So it's still very high. But uh, when we take a look at the cellular IoT, we find that uh, normally the cellular IoT, whereby the operators can take, it takes about uh, less than 20 percentage of the whole IoT market. So uh, that pose a question that uh, if we can still do something just to improve the number of uh, cellular IoT connections, because we still have quite a lot of blue seas we can uh, try to uh, step into. But how to improve the connections of IoT, especially the cellular IoT. Here we think that right now the 5G A, 5G Advanced mm, provides us some solutions. So uh, 5G A is right now an evolution of uh, 5G and uh, we think that uh, before 6G come we still have the like 3GPP release 18, 19 and 20 and uh, so uh, it's just like a pro uh, between 5G and 6G. And uh, from our view, we think that 5G A has uh, two main advantages. First one is that uh, the 10 times improvement for the traditional 5G capability, like the uplink and downlink uh, speech and also latency. And uh, another one is that actually 5G A uh, brings some brand new technologies, just like the passive IoT, just like the sensing and this kind of topics are right now covered in the release 18, 19 and later. And uh, so uh, from the IoT overview, we think that uh, the 5G A do bring us two brand new technologies. First one is about the RedCap. And uh, so RedCap is uh, short for reduced capability and it's focused on the uh, middle speed uh, IoT connections like uh, it can support uh, uh, 10 to 100 uh, Mbps download speed and uh, so uh, from this view, it can just provide more value to some uh, higher up scenarios, just like, like uh, the vehicle media and also some uh, CCTV connections. And uh, this is another uh, uh, part, but uh, uh, the most important part is that uh, the, uh, the passive IoT, and uh, as I mentioned, passive IoT due to its quite low cost, uh, it can just enlarge the number of connections into billion level. Now let's go to the passive IoT part. And uh, so passive IoT uh, uh, its principle is quite simple. And uh, uh, everybody knows uh, the RFID, which is a traditional uh, IoT technology. And uh, so uh, when we utilize the ID card, when we utilize the uh, access card, uh, we normally refer of experience this IoT technologies is RFID. And uh, it also utilized quite uh, a popular in the clothing shops. Uh, when we go to the uh, Decathlon, uh, we just put all the clothes we want into the basket, and then we can see that uh, the, there's a total price shown on the screen. And uh, so that is the RFID. And uh, so when we come to the 5G uh, passive IoT, 
uh, we can think that the base station will now go uh, to play the role as the scanner. And uh, so, uh, actually, the 5GA's passive IoT compared with the traditional RFID has some unique advantage. The first one is that it's actually based on the cellular networks, which means that it has a quite large and wide coverage. So one advantage is that uh, it continues networking. So with this kind of networking, we can do many uh, uh, things and um, also many information sharing uh, in very large uh, geography area. And the second one is that uh, basically uh, we can uh, take advantage of the advanced air interface with 5G technologies. And uh, so we can just increase the coverage range compared with traditional RFID. Okay, then uh, if we have got some ideas about the passive IoT, then what is the current status, industry status for this passive IoT? And uh, I have to say that uh, uh, from the standard point of view, uh, the passive IoT uh, is still right now the study item. And uh, 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 so it's not that fast. And uh, uh, right now the standards start to the uh, Started actually in release 19, and uh, maybe in one or two years goes to the uh, W uh, item. But we think that uh, when we talk this idea, or when we talk this uh, passive IoT to many operators, they are show very great interest. And I still remember that in last year's MWC, uh, we have a passive IoT booth, and uh, so many CTOs they come to the booth and uh, they stay there. Uh, upper than, uh, larger than 10 minutes, and we discuss quite a lot. Uh, and they have a, quite an a imagination about how this technology can do. So I think that uh, from our viewpoint, the market requirement is still uh, very high, and uh, so we think if we can do something to accelerate this definition of uh, standard in 3GPP, uh, that is, uh, well, uh, benefit the whole industry progress. And uh, also from ecosystem side, actually, right now we, are, uh, we have found two uh, uh, tech builders in China. Uh, and uh, so right now they provided with us some engineering samples. And uh, also we have already done some tests. And uh, so uh, from their viewpoint of view, they think that uh, actually the difference uh, between the passive IoT tech and the traditional techs, uh, they are the technology or the capability is quite similar. So they promised us that if the standard can be frozen and they can just support the scale deployment. <coughs> and uh, uh, as a side, uh, many operators are very interested in this technology. And uh, we, uh, in the last year, we already cooperated with uh, many operators around the world and uh, to do this kind of uh, uh, test and uh, they also uh, provide with us quite a lot of uh, uh, suggestions and also uh, what they can, what they want to do to do this, uh, to use this technology in which kind of scenarios and uh, so many interesting ideas and uh, actually I think the numbers be larger than 100 and uh, but uh, here uh, we compared and uh, we compared all the possible scenarios and uh, so we also do the initial analysis. Uh, we find that uh, the first initial boom um, market uh, will be in the smart manufacturing industry. And uh, we also have done some tests, which we'll, I will introduce later. But uh, we think still the smart manufacturing is the number one. And uh, then about the uh, grid industry, and uh, also the warehouse logistics, and also some logic tracking uh, for the budget for circulation. And uh, so this four scenarios uh, right now we identified uh, which can be the first uh, uh, prioritized applications of passive IoT. Mm. And uh, so passive IoT can play different roles in different scenarios and uh, it can also bring different values into different applications. For example, for the smart warehouse, uh, we just passive IoT can improve the inventory period from monthly to hourly. And also in the production, manufacturing, and uh, so the production efficiency, because we can have a transparent management for all the materials in the factory, it can just improve the uh, efficiency. 
And also, uh, recently we find that uh, some like uh, uh, finance companies are also very interested in this uh, technique uh, because in the Chatel mortgage uh, in scenario, they want their assets to have a reliable supervision. And uh, so every time they can make sure that their goods are still there. And uh, also, uh, there are many applications. Right now, we are still imploring uh, in the wide air, like the logistic tracking and uh, end to end uh, logistics, and also asset inventory. And we may have different uh, assets, especially in the remote areas, whereby it's quite expensive to send someone there and to check and to do the inventory. So, this also uh, as very interesting scenario and also the lost things search and uh, so this is more close to the customer market. Uh, so uh, we can see that uh, the passive IoT is quite a promising technology and we can have, right now we still can have quite a lot of imaginations on the uh, applications but when we come to the technical part we still right now facing two challenges. The first one is about the coverage, and uh, so everyone uses the smartphone, and uh, so the minimized uh, signal threshold for the smartphone to receive signal is about uh, minus 95 dBF. So this is the uh, minimized uh, uh, signal level for the smartphone, but you know that the smartphone is very powerful, it has uh, like, uh, powerful computing capabilities. So compared with the passive tech, it's just one in the sky and one on the ground. But for passive IoT right now, as far as we know, uh, the minimum uh, signal level for the passive IoT to be activated is minus 24 dB. So we can see that when we compare the passive tech uh, between the smartphone, there is a 70 dB gap for the coverage. So it's still a very quite a challenge how to mitigate this gap and uh, whether we need to mitigate this gap. And uh, so here right now uh, we are doing some innovations on this and uh, like uh, we utilize the high power base station modules and uh, uh, because we know that in the traditional RFID technology uh, we utilize unlicensed spectrum whereby the spectrum transmission power is limited but uh, with licensed spectrum we can do more and just to improve the power and to do many things and also we can utilize the advantage of the uh, uh, air interface in the cellular networks just like the coding and also different uh, up and down link coordination and uh, so uh, these two solutions can help to mitigate the gap uh, of coverage and uh, the second challenge is that uh, the interference and uh, we know that uh, for the passive attack we need to consider that it needs to be very cheap so with this such a cheap tech we cannot uh, like have the capability of a frequency conversion, a frequency uh, transformation and uh, just like the FDD mode, right, we uh, transmit and we receive in different bands but that's not possible for this tech. And uh, so uh, with the passive IoT space stations you need to support the um, transmission and receiving simultaneously and uh, this is also a challenge. And uh, right now we can do something like spatial isolation from uh, between the T TX and RX and uh, just to uh, make the work, them work well. And also uh, we can utilize some like inter-site interference cancellation technologies to uh, optimize and to uh, improve the performance to combat the interference. And uh, uh, so following this uh, solutions, we also have done some tests and uh, so, according to our test, uh, uh, right now we can see in the indoor scenarios if we have just like a, a small site on the uh, roof and uh, we can just make the uh, coverage distance uh, which is around 100 meters and uh, this is a distance quite larger than the RFID technology because we know that for RFID is only 5 to 10 meters and also uh, we can just, uh, we can deploy more uh, base stations on the roof and uh, they can do the coordination and so in the whole area it can, the information can be collected and to be shared according to different sites so this is also another way and we also tested that is uh, with an area of 3000 uh, uh, meters square 
and uh, we can do the continuous networking. And uh, also, we can see that in a very crowded scenario, if we have a baggage as full of items, then how to uh, identify this, uh, all these tags uh, in a very fast way, uh, we, can, we also have the results. And uh, also compared with the traditional RFID technology, uh, normally the, uh, we improved the accuracy of inventory, uh, just like uh, 99 percentage, and because we know that for the RFID, it's around 90 percentage inventory successful rate. And uh, so this is what we already have done in the technology part. And uh, we also cooperated with some vertical industries partners. And uh, so the first one is about uh, a very successful example, we think. And uh, we know that Hire is a very famous uh, global company which do the many uh, 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 white uh, housing uh, appliances. And uh, here we cooperated with their uh, uh, factories which are uh, manufacturing the washing machines. And uh, so we know that for a washing machine, it uh, normally consists of thousands of uh, elements. And uh, how to manage these elements and uh, how to deliver this element in a very timely way is very important. And uh, for the factory, they think that they have some pain points. And the first one is that uh, their uh, product line stopped 10 times, normally 10 times every month. Uh, why they stopped this line? Because uh, the material is not uh, right on the product line in time, so they need to wait. And uh, so actually, this is a waste of resources. And uh, also, they have other some other uh, pain points, like uh, they need to utilize uh, human uh, manual ways just to do the inventory. And uh, so we know that human beings make mistakes. So uh, we need to still recheck. So this is quite also uh, waste. And uh, but uh, um, before we come to this company, they also uh, try out the RFID way. They introduce uh, uh, very uh, famous uh, RFID product line uh, from foreign countries. And uh, but they uh, invest quite a lot on this system. But finally, they find that uh, this doesn't work very well, uh, especially for the inventory successful rate. And uh, so that's why we come to this factory. And uh, so uh, we have uh, uh, passive IoT attached on the containers of each material. And uh, in this way, uh, we can just uh, get clearly uh, what is the current status for the material or al alongside the product line. And uh, then we can just uh, wholly manage the, this, all this material supply system and uh, it's totally automatic and uh, transparent. So here we do bring some benefits like the delivery efficiency improves because we uh, will not let the product line stop due to the lack of materials. And also we just have the cost saving and also the stock taking period can be updated in a very frequent way uh, from monthly to daily level. So this is uh, one example. And uh, recently, we still cooperated with another uh, finance uh, companies. And uh, so uh, basically, we cannot imagine that uh, even a finance company can still need this kind of technologies before. But uh, when we talk to them, uh, we find that uh, it's very interesting because some companies, they want to get loan uh, from the bank. And uh, so uh, they need to apply for the mortgage loan. And uh, so but uh, the bank need to make sure that uh, you need to have something like the mortgage uh, chattel, like the steel product. Uh, this is a steel company, because, so they have the steel product. But uh, the bank need to make sure that, okay, the steel are always there. Nobody comes to take it away or store it. Uh, so, uh, but uh, before, they may need someone to monitor and uh, to take care and, uh, every day. And so we need to send someone always there to keep it. But right now, if we have this kind of a system, and uh, uh, we can see that uh, in the video, there are a lot of uh, steels, and uh, we just put the tag uh, by each steel, and uh, we also install some uh, base station on the roof, and we can collect everything and to get to know whether the steels are still there. And uh, so this is also a very interesting uh, uh, application scenario. 
Okay, so uh, uh, this is uh, our latest progress for the passive IoT technology. And uh, also, uh, what I want to say that uh, passive IoT technology is still, right now, a very promising technology. Every partners, I believe that even in the MWC uh, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, everybody will very still spend quite a long time on our passive IoT goals. And, uh, uh, but uh, right now, we think that we still do quite a lot for this um, industry, for how, what is the business, potential business modes, and uh, 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 we want to actually uh, ask help from the GTI platform and ma many other platforms to cooperate and ac accelerate uh, the 3 GDP standard, and also uh, we want to accelerate the ecosystem for this industry. And uh, so now um, uh, I'm also uh, very honored to uh, be here to share this information to you. Thank you.